to Australian Government Procurement for Suppliers. My name is Rachel Lee and I am the Business Information and Engagement Lead at the Australian Government Department of Finance's Future Made in Australia office and I'm joined by my colleague Anna Henry. We will be delivering today's session of an introduction to Australian Government Procurement for Suppliers. Uh, we would like to thank Wangaratta Council for hosting us for today's session. And before we get started, just a little housekeeping. Um, thank you for muting your cameras and microphones. Please continue to keep them muted for the session. Um, and that's just because we are recording today's session, so it's available for other local businesses. Uh, questions? If you have any questions throughout the session, please type them out in the chat and we will have some time to try and answer questions at the end of the presentation. Otherwise, we will circulate any answers we don't get to um, following the session, so you've got it in writing. Um, the slide deck, don't worry too much about sitting there and, um, and writing down notes, because we will be circulating a PDF of the slides from today's presentation at the end of the session. Um, I've already said Wangaratta Council is recording, uh, so we'll stop recording um, during the question and answer session at the end of the presentation, so we can all speak freely then. Thank you so much. Without further ado, let's get started with the session. Before we get started, I just wanted to take a moment for an acknowledgement of country. So the Department of Finance acknowledges the traditional owners and custodians of the land in which we live and work. The department extends that acknowledgement to their continuing connection to country, waters and community, and pays respects to elders past and present and extends that respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Today's session is really intended as an introductory session to help you understand how to participate in Australian government procurement and contracting opportunities. In this session, we will cover why you might be interested in selling to the Australian government, what the Australian government buys and how, our various procurement methods and approaches to industry engagement, how you can start the process to sell to the Australian government, what responding to an approach to market looks like, and what to expect if you win or don't win a contract. And I will now hand over to Anna to run through the first section of our presentation today. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. OK, so we'll start off with why you might be interested in selling to the Australian government. So the Australian government is a large potential market that requires a wide range of goods and services for delivery across the country. We have a non-discriminatory framework. This includes requirements to apply procurement practices that do not unfairly discriminate against small and medium enterprises. We also have simplified contracting and payment processes, so it makes it easier for businesses to work with us. Continuing on from this, our supplier pay on time or pay interest policy means that in most cases, Australian government organisations must pay suppliers within maximum payment terms. So this means within five calendar days for e-invoices or within 20 calendar days in all other circumstances. We also have commitments for non-corporate Commonwealth entities to source 20% of procurement by value from SMEs. Uh, provisions by sorry, provisions via the Indigenous procurement policy also requires officials to approach Indigenous businesses to tender for work. This is prior to a general approach to market and the Commonwealth procurement rules include ex exemptions for direct engagement of supported employers, Indigenous businesses and SMEs. I will note here that these provisions have certain thresholds that apply. Uh, within this as well, I just want to point out some definitions that we use. So a small and medium enterprise is defined as a business in Australia or New Zealand that employs up to 200 people on a full-time equivalent basis. 
And then an Indigenous business is one that has 50% Indigenous ownership. And this is usually demonstrated through registration with a certification body such as Supply Nation or State and Territory Equivalents. And depending on the procurement process, it may also be demonstrated through a statutory declaration. Okay, so we'll talk now about what does the Australian government actually buy? Uh, we purchase a variety of goods and services for delivery across Australia. So this is including in regional and remote areas. There's no one Australian government buyer. This means that each organisation has its own needs and it will make purchasing decisions to meet these needs. The easiest way to find out what Australian government organisations are buying is to check available and upcoming business opportunities on Austender. Austender also has a help and information centre, which has a variety of guidance and reports. These will help you to better understand opportunities in your sector. And then on the right side, we've also listed the top five categories of contracts awarded to small and medium enterprises in the 2022 to 23 financial year. So up the top there, you see management and business professionals and administrative services, uh, second engineering and research and technology based services, uh, building and construction and maintenance services, followed by information technology, broadcasting and telecommunications, and then the politics and civic affairs services. So on this slide, we've broken down the 2022 to 23 Australian government spend. So in total, it's that 74.8 billion um, in total value. Then it's the over 83,000 total contracts that were awarded to businesses. Uh, more than 44,000 of these contracts valued at nearly 20.5 billion were awarded to SMEs. 94.5% of contracts by volume went to businesses with an Australian address. And then as seen by that business participation, 86% of Australian government suppliers in 2022 to 23 were estimated to be SMEs. On the right, you can see the top 10 portfolios that contributed to 90.2% of the estimated total value of contracts awarded to SMEs in that year. Um, I won't go through them all, but you can see that that defence is considerably the largest. I will now hand back to Rachel to deliver the next section of the presentation. Thank you so much, Anna. And now we're just really going to go through how the Australian government actually approaches suppliers and how it makes purchasing decisions. So ultimately, the Australian government is accountable for how its organisations spend taxpayers' money. And we have our Commonwealth procurement rules, which set out expectations and procedures for relevant Australian government buyers to ensure the proper use of public funds and that processes are open, fair and ethical. The rules focus on achieving value for money when procuring goods and services. And when we're talking about value for money, this isn't just about price and includes financial and non-financial considerations, which are specifically outlined in the Commonwealth Procurement Rules. So the Commonwealth Procurement Rules are broken up into two different parts. Um, the first part is called Division 1, and this is something that all relevant Australian government buyers must comply with. And these parts of the rules are really very much focused around achieving value for money. There's also a second part of the Commonwealth Procurement Rules, um, which is called Division 2. And these are a big set of additional rules that apply to procurements that are valued above a relevant procurement threshold. So this procurement threshold is $80,000 for most government organisations, which are non-corporate Commonwealth entities. So that's your, you know, your departments of state. So things like the Department of Finance, the Department of Defence, Department of Health, those sort of organisations. Um, the threshold is 400,000 for what we call some specific corporate Commonwealth entities, um, and these are outlined in the CPRs as well. 
and these are organizations like the CSIRO, the Australian Institute of Marine Science, or the Civil Aviation Safety Authority, so those more technical organizations usually. And finally, there's a threshold of above 7.5 million for construction services, and that's across both types of organizations. Um, so unless there's specific exemptions that apply, um, purchases of above these thresholds must comply with these additional rules that are set out in Division 2 of the Commonwealth Procurement Rules. These are really just for your awareness, an Australian government buyer will be taking the relevant approval relevant thresholds for their organization into account when approaching the market to procure goods and services. I've talked about value for money a few times so far. So when Australian government buyers are talking about value for money, we are not just talking about price. Uh, we need to be making decisions based on an assessment of all the costs and benefits for each quote or tender response we, we receive against the originally specified business need we approach the market for. So these are specifically outlined in the CPRs and they're including, but not limited to, the quality of the goods and services, the fitness for purpose of the proposal, the potential supplier's relevant experience and performance history, the flexibility of the proposal, including things like innovation and adaptability, the environmental sustainability of the proposal, um, which can include things like energy efficiency and environmental and climate change impacts or the use of recycled products and whole of life costs, which could include things like the initial purchase price, maintenance, operating and transition out costs. So those are kind of the principles of what we're looking for as Australian government buyers when we're approaching the market. Now we'll just run through the various methods an Australian government buyer may approach the market. So ultimately, an Australian government buyer can either use an open or a limited procurement method to approach the market for any work. Um, and when we use the term ATM or approach to market, that's kind of just the general term we use. It covers a whole variety of different um, bits of jargon you may have heard. So that's things like request for tender, request for quote, um, those sorts of things. So we have an open tender, which is needs to be advertised publicly and any supplier can respond to the approach to market. These are all publicly advertised on Austender. Um, and it's kind of really the default approach for purposes for purchases above those procurement thresholds in the CPRs. Again, that's eighty thousand dollars for all corporate, all non-corporate Commonwealth entities, or four hundred thousand dollars for specific corporate Commonwealth entities. We also have a limited tender approach, which is where one or more potential suppliers are invited to respond to an ATM. In these instances, the ATM is only accessible to suppliers invited to submit a response, and it's permitted for purchases below eighty thousand dollars or $400,000 for specific corporate Commonwealth entities. Limited tender approaches are also permitted for purchases under some specific conditions or exemptions, which are outlined in the rules. And these can be things like purchases from Indigenous businesses or small and medium enterprises. Australian government buyers can also approach suppliers through something called a standing offer which has been established through a previous procurement process. A standing offer is where a supplier will enter into an agreement known as a deed of standing offer with an Australian government organization to provide goods and services for a set period under agreed terms and conditions. Where there are multiple suppliers under a standing offer, it is usually called a panel, and this is probably something you've heard about before. So Australian government organisations can then approach any suppliers appointed to a panel to request quotations in line with the existing standing offer that that supplier has entered into. Uh, when doing this, the Australian government buyer should, where possible, approach multiple businesses on the panel to respond to any quote request and select the supplier whose response represents the best value for money. 
um, that being on a panel is not actually a guarantee that you'll be approached for any quote requests. So it doesn't mean you still need to be doing kind of market um, engagement and business development activities. So new panels are usually established and periodically refreshed by an open tender ATM, which will be advertised on Austender. And if your response to these ATMs are considered value for money to represent value for money, your business may be invited to enter into a deed of standing offer and be appointed to the panel. So a panel is usually established for at least three years and may also contain options to extend the arrangement. Um, so even if a panel has been set up and it's got a three, you know, three year um, period, there are possibly going to be opportunities to join that panel through a refresh in that time frame. So it doesn't mean everyone's locked out of the market, and it means you know new market entrants can have an opportunity to join those arrangements. We also have a whole of Australian government arrangements. So there are certain whole of Australian government arrangements that most Australian government buyers must use for some categories of commonly purchased goods and services. These include things like whole of Australian government arrangements or advertising, ICT, legal services, property services, travel and accommodation, stationery and office supplies, management advisory services and labour hire. So these can be contracts with specific suppliers or standing offer or panel arrangements and are usually established by an open tender. Where these arrangements have been established, they are mandatory for non-corporate Commonwealth entities to use and only businesses that are covered by the arrangement may be approached for work in general. Now we're just kind of step through what the process really is for these approach, these various approaches to the market uh, and what this means for from a business perspective. So we'll go through a limited tender ATM first and then we'll move across to an open tender ATM. So under a limited tender approach to market, the first step is that a buyer will research and identify potential businesses. So they can look for suppliers via market research, exploring existing channels, resources, or things, registers and networks. The buyer will then approach one or more businesses directly to request a quote or a formal tender response. Not all purchases require a formal approach to market and tender response process. This is really very much dependent on the complexity and risk of the purchase. So generally, purchases under $10,000 Buyers will seek a quote, and if they accept the quote, they give you credit card details and you can process the transaction. So, but regardless of kind of the approach they use, buyers need to ensure that the approach is consistent and fair for all potential suppliers. Uh, the buyer will then assess any quotes or responses received. Uh, the buyer may contact a business to clarify details in their response or to negotiate prior to entering into a contract. Value for money is what buyers are looking for to justify purchasing decisions. If a buyer provides it, businesses must respond using any required templates formats and any tender responses must be assessed against any evaluation criteria provided. The contract will then be negotiated between the buyer and the preferred supplier and the buyer must notify any unsuccessful tenderers of the outcome. All respondents are entitled to request a debriefing to seek feedback on their response, regardless of whether or not they were successful in being awarded a contract. So what this means for you as a business when you're thinking about targeting these limited tender opportunities, um, really consider registering with relevant industry networks, directories and databases and maintaining a web presence. You may be approached quote, for work directly through these channels. And depending on the complexity of the work, you might be required to provide either a simple quote or a formal tender response. If any evaluation criteria is provided, you must demonstrate that you meet the specified criteria to competitively tender for work. 
if you want to have a look at what APN documentation might look like, there are examples on the Department of Finance website in the Commonwealth Contracting Suite section, and we'll share a link of that in the chat at the end of this session. So it's important for me to emphasize that being contacted for a quote doesn't guarantee that you will win any work um, because the buyer will still need to assess that any response is value, considered to be value for money before entering into an arrangement. And finally, when you have been notified of contract outcomes, you may request a debriefing to receive feedback on your submission. If you request it, a buyer must provide you with a debriefing. And we always encourage businesses to seek any feedback on their submissions to better position you for a future opportunity if it comes around. We'll now just quickly run through open tender approaches to market. So under an open tender approach to market, a buyer needs to publicly advertise the approach to market on Tender, And any interested suppliers may respond to the ATM by providing the required requested information in the ATM. The tender listing may also be shared by other methods, so agency websites, journals, or newspapers, but the listing on Tender is always the kind of the source of truth. So that's really where you should be looking in the first instance. Lodgement timelines and processes will be clearly outlined in the ATM documentation. And responses are generally lodged via Tender for an open tender, unless there are alternative arrangements which will be outlined in ATM documentation. Uh, businesses must respond as outlined in ATM documentation by the specified deadline. So be sure to ask any questions and clarify any requirements before responding to the ATM. To be considered, your tender responses must meet any minimum requirements set out in the ATM. And tender responses must also demonstrate value for money against any evaluation criteria set out in the ATM. The buyer will then assess any all responses received by the deadline. The buyer may contact businesses to clarify details in their response or to negotiate prior to entering into a contract. Value for money must be achieved to justify any purchasing decisions. And tender responses must be assessed against any evaluation criteria provided to suppliers. A contract will then be negotiated between the buyer and the preferred supplier, and the buyer must notify unsuccessful tenders of the outcome. Again, all respondents are entitled to request a debriefing, to seek feedback on their response. In terms of what this means for you as a business, when looking at open tender opportunities, uh, we really encourage you to register with Tender for free to be notici notified of new open tender ATMs as they are listed. You will need to be registered with Tender to access any detailed ATM documentation and lodge a response via Austender if requested anyway, so it, it's good to just get registered um, as soon as you can, really. Businesses will then need to submit a formal response that complies with the ATM documentation, and only those who submit a tender response and meet any minimum requirements can be considered for the work. So you must meet any minimum requirements and demonstrate value for money against any specified evaluation criteria to competitively tender for the work. And again, when you've been notified of contract outcomes, you can request a debriefing to receive back, receive a feedback on your submission. And if you ask for one, a buyer must provide you with a debriefing. There are some other ways the Australian government can engage with businesses around the procurement process. So firstly, we have market research. Prior to purchasing, an Australian government buyer may contact businesses to conduct market research, scope potential needs, and assess industry's capability to meet requirements. There can also be briefing sessions and just answering questions about the process. So during the procurement process, Australian government buyers may hold briefing sessions to provide potential suppliers with an opportunity to engage 
ask any questions and increase their understandings of tender requirements and processes. Briefings for open tenders may be advertised in tender alongside the approach to market documentation. And you may also ask the contact officer in the ATM documentation any questions to clarify requirements and processes. Responses to questions raised at industry briefings or asked by potential suppliers through direct queries are generally de-identified and provided to all potential suppliers. And buyers do this just to make sure every potential supplier is op operating with the same level of information and try to ensure a level playing field so that everyone can respond fairly, basically. Buyers can also publish information requests on Austender. So these can be a request for information, which is used to gather information about suppliers' capabilities and products that may form a solution or contribute to future procurement requirements, or an expression of interest, which is used to identify suppliers capable of meeting procurement requirements and potentially provide a shortlist for a later approach to market. Now, neither of these processes are necessarily a commitment by the Australian government to purchase the goods or services outlined in the request, nor do they guarantee any work, but they are often used to help buyers to scope future procurements so they can still be useful for you to participate in to kind of understand what buyers might be looking for and be aware of future opportunities that may arise. So where can you start as a business in terms of um, identifying potential opportunities to work with Australian government organisations? Firstly, before we continue, I just need to emphasise that selling to the Australian government is an important commercial decision. You should critically assess and be fully informed before deciding if it is the right business decision for you. So some tips we have for all businesses is really Come along to sessions like these so you make sure you can understand the process. Uh, we use to buy goods and services. Uh, register on Tender for free and set up notifications so you can be aware of open tender opportunities in your sector. Then it's really just start taking steps to understand the buyer. So there is a lot of Australian government organisations. There's over 100 of us in various different um, areas. Each Australian government organisation has its own needs and purchasing processes. You can check individual websites to learn about what each Australian government organisation does. And we all have to have a resource called the online Australian government directory uh, at directory.gov.au, which can also assist with understanding portfolios and organisation structures. Uh, before res responding to any tender, it's important to know your value proposition and be prepared to meet any common minimum requirements. Start building connections and utilizing networks so you can be more aware of opportunities as they arise. Um, we always really encourage buyers to make sure they have an easy to find and user-friendly website because this is often how buyers will be approaching you in the first instance uh, for limited gender opportunities. And finally, you can think about attending industry events and trade shows where buyers may be present so that you can connect with them, understand their needs, and also they can be more aware of your products and services. We also just have some advice for specific sectors. So if you're an Indigenous business, you can register on Supply Nation uh, and their Indigenous business database, which is really the database um, Australian government buyers will be looking at in the first instance to identify Indigenous businesses to approach for work. If you're operating in the ICT sector, you might want to look at information and the marketplace and panels available on buyict.gov.au, and that includes a mix of both mandatory ICT arrangements and non-mandatory ICT arrangements that are nevertheless still used by quite a lot of Australian government buyers. Um, so if you're in that space, we encourage you to go and look at those marketplaces. And finally, if you're interested in the defence industry, you may wish to engage with the Office of Defence Industry Support, which is kind of there as a one-stop shop to help 
SMEs in particular, and businesses more broadly understand the defence industry landscape and how they can participate in the defence industry. I've talked about Austender quite a lot in this presentation. So Austender is where the Australian government publishes current business opportunities and notices of standing offers, and also where it publishes notice of successful contracts valued at or above $10,000. So you can register on Austender to be notified of business opportunities that match your business profile. You can use Austender to see upcoming opportunities in annual procurement plans, to download tender documents, lodge a tender response where required, and find details about successful tenders and existing contracts. Um, if you want to know more about how to use Austender, you can visit the Austender Help and Information Center uh, and also use that to understand how to find opportunities. And there's lots of information about using the platform, including kind of a step by step guide to just lodging a tender in the system. Uh, if you're new to Austender, there's um, detailed guidance on help.tenders.gov.au around becoming a registered user and setting up notifications so that you can make sure you're getting the right information. Now we'll just kind of quickly step through what an approach to market document actually looks like and how you would go through or go about the process of responding to an approach to market. So if you look at an approach to market document, it'll usually include a description, which will set out a statement of requirements, outline the nature and scope of the work that the government buyer is looking to procure. They'll also include any deliverables or expected outcomes, technical specifications, and any expected timeframes for delivery or information on things like industry briefings. They will also outline any conditions for participation, which can include things like relevant licenses, standards, or expected levels of insurance. If applicable, you will, this will also include any requirements under what we call procurement connected policies. And I'll go through this in more detail on the next slide. But if you don't meet these minimum conditions for participation, your tender cannot be considered and will be set aside and not assessed. So they're very important. There is also the ATM will also outline evaluation criteria, which is used by buyers to assess the tenders. There's no one set of criteria and it really varies across approaches to market. Some examples of criteria include things like just demonstrated ability to provide the goods and services requested or pricing or environmental sustainability, things like that. The ATM document will also outline any minimum content and format requirements, and this can be just be things like making sure you provide copies of any certificates required, using certain schedules, or submitting a response electronically. They'll also outline process rules on how the tender will be run and how responses will be evaluated. And finally, they will usually include a draft contract, and that's really to allow you to clearly understand the requirements and any terms and conditions you will be subject to if you are successful in tendering for the work. So if you want to go and have a look at what ATM documentation looks like, um, honestly, we just encourage you to visit Austender, download a current ATM documentation, but you will need to register an account beforehand. Uh, Help.tenders.gov.au also has a practice lodgement process that you can test out so you know how to do it ahead of an opportunity you're really interested in. And they also have a checklist for you to assist you with preparation. We really encourage uh, sellers to look at what these documents look like before an, an ATM they're interested in comes along. And that's really just so you have an idea of what buyers will be asking you for and what the documents look like and how long it might take you to complete an ATM. 
So it's always good practice. We encourage you to go and look at a live example to see how it looks. So I mentioned procurement connected policies on the last slides. So there is a number of Australian government procurement connected policies and these place minimum requirements on businesses responding to certain tenders. Where these policies are relevant, the related requirements will be clearly outlined in any ATM documentation. Um, and there are typically thresholds relating to contract value or business size that determine whether a policy applies. So the bottom half of this slide just has all of the policies list listed out. Um, we have a shadow economy policy. We have workplace gender equality procurement principles. We have a payment times policy. We have an Australian indus industry participation policy and an indigenous procurement policy. Uh, really the one you're most likely to come across, particularly as a small and medium enterprise, is the shadow economy procurement connector policy. So I'll run through this one in a bit of detail now. So any business tendering for contracts over $4 million are required to provide a statement of tax record from the Australian Taxation Office showing that they have a satisfactory tax record either at the time any tender closes or within four days of the tender closing if they have provided a request receipt. So despite that $4 million threshold, this is a requirement that is often included in approaches to market to establish or refresh panel arrangements. And that's because when you approach the market to set up a new panel, uh, the buyer has to estimate the total value of contracts that will be awarded under that panel arrangement. So that's often a figure that will be over $4 million. Um, and so really, if you're looking at getting on getting on a panel arrangement or tendering for large pieces of work, we encourage you to make sure you have a statement of tax record squared away before an opportunity you are interested in comes along. It There is a time frame to work with the ATO to get that document ready. Uh, once it's ready, I believe it's valid for a year and then it, it's continuing to make sure that document is kept up to date so that you can include it in tender responses where it's needed. So that's probably an important takeaway from today. I won't go in the other, into the other policies in detail. Um, because they are mostly targeted at um, larger businesses or opportunities, but detailed information on all of these policies and what it means for suppliers is available on our selling to government website, which will include details of at the end of the session. So we'll now just quickly step through how you would approach responding to an approach to market. Firstly, review the approach to market carefully. Each ATM is different, so make sure you read the instructions and requirements carefully. Be sure to ask any clarifying questions you need to the procurement officer listed as the contact. Uh, make sure you note the closing date. You must meet the deadline as late tender tenders will not be accepted. Make sure you're understanding what goods or services are being requested and any required timeframes for delivery and understand if there are any minimum requirements or conditions of participation you need to meet. The next step is to prepare documents needed to meet minimum requirements and conditions of participation. So it's good to start um, preparing these documents well before closing dates or even before you start a tender application. And that's really just because sometimes there's a time frame associated with getting them done. Uh, so again, statement of tax record is the obvious example. Um, you can get that squared away well before a process starts and make sure you have it there when you need it. The next step is just determining what your responses will be to any evaluation criteria. So meeting evaluation criteria is critical to competitively responding to a tender and demonstrates your ability to deliver the proposed work. Uh, buyers need to assess each supplier's tender response against these requirements. The criteria will vary from tender to tender, but some commonly used criteria may ask you to demonstrate an ability to provide the requested goods and services, an ability to manage risk, pricing, or compliance with stated contract conditions. 
And finally, when you, as you're drafting your response, make sure you meet the deadline and submit your response in the format requested with the required documentation before the closing date. Uh, remember, as you're building your ATM response, value for money is what buyers are looking for, and value for money is not just about cost. So buyers must consider the relevant financial and non-financial aspects of each quote or tender response, including, but not limited to, the quality of the goods and services, the fitness for purpose of the proposal, the potential supplier's relevant experience and performance history, the flexibility of the proposal, the environmental sustainability of the proposed goods and services, and all of life costs. So just some important things for you to keep in mind for all approaches to market. Again, you must submit your response by the specified date and time to the specified location and in the specified format, which could be electronically via Austender, but instructions will be outlined in any ATM documentation. To competitively tender for work, you should meet any conditions of participation, address the evaluation criteria, complete any mandatory forms, meet any minimum requirements, and clearly demonstrate why your business should be selected on a value for money basis. ATM documents and requirements can vary, so always read the documentation and understand what is required before getting started on your response. And I will now hand over to Anna to close out the presentation. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Rachel. All right, so I will talk about what you can expect if you win a contract. So firstly, um, all businesses, including those who successfully win a contract, are entitled to request a debriefing. Contracts valued over $10,000 must be reported on Austender by the Australian government buyer within 42 days of the agreement being entered into. And then with the contract management side of things, the Australian government organisation should appoint someone to oversee management of the contract. It includes things like overlooking of acceptance, delivery, payment and administration. Contract management itself can involve governance, performance management, rendering of invoices, milestone reporting requirements and potential contract variations. The contract sets out the roles and responsibilities of all parties. It includes the how, when and to what standard the deliverables slash deliverable identified in the contract are to be delivered. The contract will also contain provisions for how the organisation will monitor outputs and it outlines your rights and obligations. So it includes details like managing conflicts of interest, managing confidential and personal information, auditing arrangements, liability, identify I can never say this word, indemnification and dispute resolution. Payment terms will also be contained in the contract. Contract documentation for purchases um, under the $200,000 is generally consistent. So you may wish to view the standard docu uh, contract documentation via the Commonwealth Contracting Suite on the Department of Finance website. So you can better understand what to expect and your obligations um, will link to the CCS at the end of the presentation. So how can you successfully work with the Australian government? Well, the most important thing is really to deliver the goods and services on time, on budget and in a professional manner. Uh, we recommend fill in the paperwork for your contract promptly and give the Australian government contract manager any information that they need as soon as you can. Keep your contract manager informed. So you might do this by phone, email, or attending meetings. Regular meetings are seen, um, sorry, regular meetings relevant to the contract are seen as good practice. Don't be afraid, afraid to advise of issues. 
a professional contract manager would prefer to work with you to prevent issues rather than try to fix them afterwards and ensure that all deliverables have been completed and contractual obligations have been met, including reporting requirements within the timeframe specified in the contract. But what if you don't win a contract? So every business that responds to an ATM is entitled to request a debriefing after the completion of the procurement process. Aspects of another business's response or offer cannot be discussed with you in a debriefing. The purpose of a debriefing is more to just uh, is sorry is not to justify the selection of the successful tenderer, but rather to give you feedback on your individual response. We recommend businesses request a debriefing to receive feedback on your tender response. This can help you to compete more effectively in future processes. So some typical themes that may be covered in a debriefing are comparison of your offer to the evaluation criteria, strengths and weaknesses of your offer, suitability of your experience and qualifications, an indication of cost competitiveness, uh, referee reports or past performance, and then understanding of the Australian government procurement process. Can you complain if you don't win? Yes. After a tender process is over, you may have concerns that the process was flawed or the evaluation was inaccurate or unfair. Requesting a debriefing is found to be good practice. You can obtain feedback about your offer and gain a better understanding of the process. But if you feel a matter is still unresolved, you should indicate this very clearly to the Australian government organisation that managed the procurement process before making a formal complaint. Complaints should only relate to the process followed by the Australian Government Organisation and its consistency with the requirements of the Commonwealth procurement rules. The fact that your offer was not selected is not sufficient grounds for complaint. There are further mechanisms you may want to consider if you are not happy with the outcome. Depending on your concerns, you may wish to raise the matter with the Australian Government Procurement Coordinator, approach the Commonwealth Ombudsman, or there may be recourse through um, Federal Circuit Court or the Federal Court of Australia. So if you want to know more, um, the Department of Finance's Selling to Government website provides information to support businesses to better understand how to participate in Australian government procurement and contracting opportunities. So selling to government has a range of information. This includes things like where to find opportunities, rules and processes involved um, that organisations must follow when procuring goods and services, how to respond to approach to market, what to expect if you're awarded a contract. We are continuously updating the website to try and improve information for suppliers. And if you are interested in supplying to the Australian government, then visit sellingtogov.finance.gov.au to find out more. Uh, thank you for taking the time to come and listen to us today. We hope you found the session useful. We will stop the recording now.